Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Hannes. And I'm Michael. We're both um, mostly working on V8. And today, we're going to chat about lessons learned from the Memory Roadshow. OK, so let's start. At first, let's take a step back and talk about why memory matters to Chrome at all. So it turns out that 30% of all render crashes on Windows are because of out-of-memory situations. That's just one of the reasons why we care about memory, but that's one that users actually experience. But on the other hand, it's also an opportunity. Because that means, in the end, we could uh, reduce the amount of crashes by 30% too. And that's sweet. OK, so what's the reason why Chrome crashes out of memory? Um, is it Chrome? You know, there is like sometimes bad press that Chrome is a memory hog. Um, is it the web? Um, it's pretty hard to figure out like what's the main reason. The answer is probably somewhere in between. Um, but each talk should have a controversial hypothesis. And let's state one. And let's say the majority of the OMs are caused by web page. We may see if this holds or not. In general, this is like really hard to prove, and we don't have a proof for that. So this is why we call it a hypothesis. Right now, what we would need to do is like we would need to go to every single one of these crashers and inspect the heap and the state and figure out, well, was it V8 that was leaking memory? Or was it a web page that was just caching more and more stuff, building up a huge DOM tree? and in the end just run out of memory because it run against the memory barriers uh, we have in V8 or in other subsystems of Chrome. Well, how do we get to proof or something close by? Well, why not simply ask web developers? So questions like, why do web pages use so much memory? How do you as a web developer reason about memory? How can Chromium improve on that department? And where are all the leaks in Chromium and on your web page? So we wanted to have time to actually talk with web, developer, uh, web developers about that topic. So what did we did? We conducted a roadshow. Hannes took his uh, VW bus, and everybody from the V8 team, not everybody, a few people. How did we fit 12 people in this bus? We shrink them. OK. Uh, we flow, flew over to Mountain View. We also grabbed a few Chrome memory experts and a few people from DevTools. And we sit together with uh, popular web pages like YouTube, Facebook, who all also did a talk here, Calendar app, Gmail, Docs, Twitter, AMP. And we spent a few hours each with them to analyze their most pressing use cases regarding memory consumption. And during the roadshow, we got a few interesting questions from the developers. They are uh, popping up now on the slide behind me. And, and some are really interesting. So this is kind of the guideline for our talk here. For each of these questions, we will um, try to give a few answers, try to give a few proposals, so how we could improve the situation and also show off a few uh, things that the V8 team, together with other teams, was working on recently. And we launched a few features, or we're about to launch a few features to um, make the situation maybe better. So big disclaimer at the beginning. Some of the ideas that we are showing off here are just ideas, crazy ideas. They are not reconciled. They are only proposals. They are all, only wild ideas. Take them with a grain of salt. That was the official disclaimer. Cool. So let's start with the most important question. Where do we start as a web developer to actually reason about memory? Um, turns out the first step is actually using DevTools. In DevTools, you have the memory tab, and you also have the option to analyze memory on the performance tab with this uh, checkbox. Hannes will go a little bit into detail and all of these options a little bit later. Um, what stands out for is that there is no clear indication uh, for the web developer what to shoot for. When can a web developer actually declare mission accomplished? We saved a lot, uh, enough memory, so we can go home. We can tackle the next project. It's not there. So what if we, as a browser, 
can engage and provide guidance to web developers early in the process. We could apply the same methodology that we used in the loading project and, for example, leverage Lighthouse. Imagine you open Lighthouse and you can do an audit for memory. And then you get a memory report highlighting during the timeline of your loading how much memory your page consumed and also showing you opportunities. Did you, uh, did you know that, for example, your web page is not going to load on low memory devices because it will simply crash? That would be actual business lost. In addition, we could also add memory metrics or OOM metrics uh, in a Chrome user experience report. So for people who don't know what the Chrome user experience report is, it provides user experience metrics for how real-world Chrome users experience popular destinations on the web. Currently, it has a lot of loading metrics uh, in it, so it would be great if you also have memory metrics in there. The next question we got asked was, how much memory do I really use? Hmm. Turns out, the answer to that question is interesting. Let me introduce you to that pie chart. This is a rough and simplified distribution of memory consumption sources over the whole web. Turns out that 55, uh, 35 percent is used to store JavaScript objects and metadata related to JavaScript. That's the blue area, okay? 10 percent is spent on representing DOM elements in memory. Anything else, like images, backing stores for big JavaScript arrays, and browser features, stuff like that, is in the yellow area, so it's 55%. Let's have a look on the next slide uh, to find out why this is relevant and this distribution is relevant. Yeah, so developers have a few tools to really monitor and, and di dive deep into the memory consumption of the app. They perform the performance memory API that currently gives you uh, V8 heap sizes, um, whatever that means, we will see on the next slide what it actually means today and why it's not working well. But there are developers out there who are using it, and they are all actually pretty happy that they have some signal from the wild, right? They do live reporting what we have with UMA or UKM, where um, we see how a website is doing in the wild. They set it up on their own, and they have a way of uh, communicating that data back, and we, which is really great, and uh, we should make that tool stronger. Uh, we'll see on the next slide a, a few ideas what we have in mind there to improve that. Um, DevTools is also great. It like For JavaScript memory reasoning, you can see a lot in DevTools. It, it's fantastic. You can find out memory leaks in, in, in DevTools. You can find out how objects are hooked up together. There are various options. I will also go briefly over that uh, in the following slides. But it also mostly deals with, uh, with JavaScript and, and V8 and uh, not so much about the other components like, like Blink or, or other um, chunks of memory that, that got allocated. Um, and for many times, like with an expert, if we have to look into a uh, an out of memory crash that comes in, or uh, if a web page author complains that memory is huge, um, we look into about tracing, um, take the mem infra category and look into all these components. And there's a bunch of other sometimes handwritten tools that people have on branches or that are internally used in Chrome to figure out where memory is going, not only in JavaScript, but in, in other components that uh, are not visible um, directly to the regular dev uh, web developer. So two obvious things that became clear during the memory roadshow where we should improve our um, make performance memory stronger, like um, give the developer the opportunity to um, see a clearer picture of where all the memory is going in Chromium and also expand DevTools to, um, in the heap snapshotting, for example, um, not only see a JavaScript memory, but the true DOM representation that is uh, hooked together with JavaScript. Um, let's look into performance memory uh, first. Like, this is an API you can call. What you get today um, is like, you see the memory allocations on the VAP. It's not even the full JavaScript heap, like what Michael uh, mentioned before. Um, for example, the backing store of huge typed arrays are not even accounted there because we allocate them not on the JavaScript heap but on the partition alloc heap. The same for externalized strings, right? So we saw the case during memory roadshow that huge typed arrays, for example, 
uh, were not accounted at all. And it was like a huge surprise that your app is actually uh, consuming way more memory than you were thinking it was doing, right? So, so that's bad, right? Um, right now, it updates only every 20 minutes for privacy, privacy and security reason. And you can only call it on the main thread, right? So it's, it's pretty limited. And if you have a full-blown web application um, with workers and whatnot, um, that's an issue. So we are trying to improve that here. There is actually a proposal on, on GitHub. You can have a look there. Uh, we're trying to come up with a, maybe a real standard. Um, right now, it's only implemented, as far as I know, um, by Chrome. And the requirements we have and what this uh, API actually should give us it should give us precise numbers. And what we are planning to do as a first step is like, well, we, why not expose like the overall memory consumption of the process, right? That includes like everything, right? It may not be super useful for some use cases if you also have the compositor memories here, whatnot, right? But it's like, it's like the full truth, right? And you, you know how you're doing in the wild. And you also give the developer the opportunity to file a bug against Chrome, right? If you see like your tiny PWA uses 400 max, oh, that's a problem, right? And there may be a problem on the Chrome side, or it is maybe in your app. Um, we all also want to um, put information there about if this process is shared by multiple tabs and how many workers are running, because this influences the overall memory consumption of the process um, and may, may skew your data. And we are thinking about, as an experimental next step, maybe expose a dictionary as like the memory of the browser dictionary, because each browser has a different implementation. And Chrome can fill it up, for example, with the mem infra categories that has a, a number for V8, has a number for partition alloc, has a number for blink, and so on, so that you have uh, like all the details of where memory is going. And on top of that, it would also be great to not only allow it from the main thread, but also from workers. Because if you have your PWA, you will have uh, some rare worker, and you also want to make sure that this one um, is tiny. OK, um, about DevTools, um, there's like, if you go to the memory tab in DevTools, there are three categories. There's a lot of documentation out, out there. I don't want to spend too much on the um, allocation profile, allocation timeline. Actually, I just want to mention it. It's really cool tools if you want to understand the JavaScript memory consumption and figure out which method is allocating what type of objects and how much is it contributing to the memory footprint. Um, but I want to talk about the heap snapshot. Um, the heap snapshot originally only contained um, the JavaScript memory, which is OK if you only want to stay within JavaScript. But you know, um, the DOM and JavaScript is like really tightly connected. There are a lot of references going from V8 to Blink and backwards. And for certain kinds of memory leaks, it was really hard, if you don't have the DOM information, to figure out actually where memory is going. And a particularly interesting example is uh, event listeners. If you like, forget to unregister your event listener, then this is like a very common leak. We saw that over and over again. And um, you see on the right side, you see the, the green and red dots, where green is like JavaScript memory, and red is like the DOM memory. And you see like at some point, you go from JavaScript over to the DOM and back. right? And if you, if you don't, don't have the DOM information, it may be an issue to figure out the memory leak. So this is how it looked in M65. And we only saw, OK, the window object uh, was somehow leaking. And then there's some uh, information about, oh, there's the DOM HTML. But I, I don't really know actually what's going on, right? Because we did not have the full detail. Um, and what we built and chipped in M66, it's like we used, uh, we used the wrapper tracing. What we do also for um, GC, uh, if you have been at the last BlinkCon or the, and also BlinkCon before, we had talks about tracing from V8 to Blink and back to clean up the memory. We also use this now for the tooling, and you see like the full truth here. You see that how you go through the DOM to the window object. You see what's going on. You see actually, OK, there's an event listener, and um, this is where the function what is leaking. And it's super easy to figure out um, and to fix the leak. And we, we just shipped that a few days before the memory roadshow, and it was already super helpful there. And that, that just happened by accident. <laughs> I mean, we planned for it, but we didn't expect to land it. And um, we're super happy with that. And I think that improved the situation of cross-component memory investigations quite a bit. So next question. How slim should a web page be? What is an acceptable size 
for example, for a project management application on the web? That's a good question. Unfortunately, there is no accessible way to find out what is slim enough. There's no standards, there's no model. A few uh, ways forward would be, again, learning from how we tackled the problem with the loading speed project. Publish case studies on memory consumption, time memory consumption, two business metrics, and also, for example, get memory data being used in page speed insights. I think Rick also in the keynote mentioned page speed yeah. insights. So, ah, yeah, now it comes. Why not simply add also a size category? And then highlight, oh, compared to the rest of the web or compared to all the other project management sites out there, your size is small, so you're golden. Or your size is big. Uh, you should improve because, you know, you're going to crash on low memory devices. I don't know how many project managers have low memory devices. Probably not a lot. <laughs> all right. Th th I think that brings us now to my favorite question um, they asked us. Um, there, there was one engineer who was like, I, I really want to improve memory, but I have a hard time selling it to my manager. I, I know it's an issue, but how do I convince my manager, actually, that it makes sense to invest in it and to trim down memory consumption? Because there are no clear guidelines, and because maybe it may not be a threat to their business model, or maybe it is, right? And, and th this is like really hard to prove, and there is no good way right now how to prove it. Um, but obviously, if you run into an out of memory, what we heard also earlier today, this is like the worst user experience ever, right? You, you just crash, right? And you don't know what's going on. And for multiple reasons, that may be a problem, right? Maybe you're not only testing on high performance devices and never run on low memory device, and you don't even realize that you're crashing right away during page load. And also, um, Chrome with the multi-tab scenario um, suffers a bit from tragedy of the commons, that like if everybody's using a lot of memory, which may not be an issue on a single tab, but suddenly you have 10 tabs open and your, your tabs go away. Um, but all this handling with OOMs, uh, we have a few cool projects um, going on in Chrome. I don't want to talk too much about NeoM interventions and also tap discarding lifecycle API. I think we have sessions that um, go into details there. Um, I want to mention the last project. This is a project where we are doing um, that also deals with uh, out of memory. It's called Prompt. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple. And I have an animated GIF here that actually shows what it's doing. Um, it will reload. We see the sort of below. Uh, when you run out of memory, before you see the all snap, it's kind of like the emergency case scenario. It will just reload and show a warning to the user like, hey, your tab was reloaded because there was a memory problem. And for, I mean, some users that may be just too much information and they may be like, oh, I have no idea what memory is. But some may come back to Chrome or to the site owner and be like, hey, I'm continuously running out of memory. Maybe you want to have a look. And we think that like the user experience is, is also better if you just continue to see content and don't see the all snap. So we have multiple ways of like with tap discarding, with, with reloading, with the lifecycle API to tell the developer that uh, something is a problem. And they were like super excited about, we shared with them like, hey, would it help if we show you that you get reloaded a lot, that you get discarded a lot, that you constantly run into memory pressure in the wild. And that would be actually also super useful data for them to reason about their site in the wild, how they are doing, and if they, if they can Im improve. And if you like get a lot of data and you see that you dis get this card a lot, your memory consumption is high on the high percentiles, well, that may be a good indicator um, that there is a problem. And then you may be able to tie it to your business metrics. If you get discarded, if your ads get discarded a lot, uh, that may be a problem. OK. Um, let's come back to the hypothesis um, that the majority of uh, out of memories are caused by web pages. Well, I still don't have a proof, um, but was but what was particularly interesting uh, was that during the roadshow, like every day, spending hours with the web pages, we found uh, quite serious memory leaks in all of the apps, right? And these are, as you saw before, these are quite popular apps, right? So that may be an indicator that actually. That there is a problem, right? And we have to help the developers, first of all, figure out that something is a problem and give them the right tools so that they can do something against it and maybe reduce the OMs. Um, and that's uh, part of our job to, to help them and, and give them the right tools. So in case you want to get involved, 
have an opinion, think you are crazy, that's good. Participate in the relevant unconference sessions uh, that are going to happen during BlinkCon. Uh, so for example, the future of real-world benchmarks, providing developers with a valid path, or uh, unified JavaScript and Blink Keep. Alternatively, simply talk to us. That also works most of the time. And this is the wrap, also known as the three main lessons learned we want to get, we got out of the roadshow. So the first one is we need to incentivize web developers to care more about memory. And the next one is we need to provide them with the means to reliably measure and benchmark memory consumption. And last but not least, we need to give them the right tools to fix the problems on their own. And with that, thank you very much. And we are happy to take questions, I guess, if anybody has any. And see you at the unconference sessions, if not. Yeah, thanks. A question, although I'm guessing this might be addressed later. Uh, has there been any thought of adding a primitive, not in the performance API, but in like the spec, for example, like object dot size of, where <clears throat> I can easily query the size of an object, and not so much only for memory uh, monitoring, but a simple, easy use case for this is like, I want to have a cache that is bound by memory, like I want to allocate 40 megabytes to my cache, whether I'm caching some database operation or some server data, and I want to evict objects, and you know maybe they don't have the same size, so I can just estimate the number of objects. Um, and it seems like in C++ it's easy. I don't know if that's easy to expose. You mentioned some security um, stuff that's going on with you know taking snapshot every 15 minutes or whatever that was. Just uh, I was wondering. Uh, interesting question. Um, that, that one did not come up before. Uh, I, I can see how that would be useful. That, that would need to be part of the JavaScript language. Uh, so we would be, we too, I mean, <laughs> it would be interesting to have that conversation. I don't think as a higher level language you, you want to expose details like that, right? Because it's also, it's very dependent on the, on the platform you're running on. And V8 may do something very different than, than other browsers. Um, yeah, good, good, good question. I have to think about that, how much you would use it. What we are going to do and what, what we saw also as an issue during the roadshow, at least in one or two examples, is like that weak references can actually help um, to structure your caches and, and manage them. JavaScript currently doesn't have that, but this is right now under discussion at TC39. Um, so that may be a feature that may allow you to build more efficient cache handling and so that you don't run into traps where you accidentally hold on with a strong reference to an object. And that, that, that turns out to be like a hard problem today. Any other questions? Uh, I want to uh, state that question as a browser developer uh, perspective. Um, uh, I'm from UC browser, so I the the the, the OOM problem, OOM crash is always a problem for us. Uh, top ten, like, like top ten, but but I uh, made a little modification to V8, like uh, the when a, a frame is disposed, we we start start uh, uh, the. Uh, the incremental marking immediately uh, the the crash the the OM crash just pushed to uh, you you can see them out of our statistic you mean when a, when a context is disposed um not we we cannot see them in top 100 one, 100 so is so so it's out of our statistic page Uh, I, I'm not sure if I get. Uh, the, they're not the 100th okay. problem. 
But you said, so out of memory, is the your number one question or the uh, one hundredth question? The originally is the top ten problem. Yeah. The, now it's not the top one hundred problem. Okay. Now it's not the top one hundred problem for you. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. For for us, it is like yeah, maybe one of the yeah, highest priority. Maybe pro there's a lot of to uh, work to do uh, on the engine part or and the the brain brain part. Okay. Okay. So the thing is also with memory consumption is also a trade-off space with speed. So we need to find the sweet spot. I mean, on Android, what may happen is that you, for us, that you get killed before we actually get no notified that you get killed. So you don't run, we don't have it as an out of memory in that. Okay. Okay, interesting. So I just wanted to clarify that. So, you, so you're saying you made a small change to V8 that that starts marking when, whenever a frame is disposed? Is yeah. that what you said? Yeah. And and you saw that cut your OOM rate d dramatically. OOMs yeah. went down dramatically as a result of that change. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Is that Can you share that change with these guys so they can try it out? Very, very easy to just start an OOM here. <coughs> just let go, parking. Start an incremental mark on the notification of context dis uh, disposure. Does that sound worth trying? Yeah. So we're we doing we doing parts like that. We try not to be too heavy on the context disposal. Um, yeah, it's interesting. We can experiment with that. We could do a Finch trial for that, for that. Uh, why not on on low memory devices? We actually try to stay like uh, super small with various heuristics, right? Um, we don't r like to hook up with some events that, that trigger GC because if you end up triggering a lot of context disposal, you may see other bad effects. It's doing a lot, like, you know, if you context dispose every 10, 20 milliseconds for whatever reason, um, you may get a lot of GC traffic, um, which may also not be beneficial. And uh, the mechanisms we have is like we try to de detect idleness of the web page and Scale GC there, but that's an interesting thing. I, I didn't understand it. Thanks, Rick, for clarifying that. Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting. Like, ultimate GC is a trade off between uh, CPU time spent and memory use, right? Yeah. Like, a, yeah. the, you could reduce memory usage by doing a GC after every instruction, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I don't know how to test this better than a Finch yeah. trial that yeah. ultimately we have to weigh off two different metrics, yeah. right? It's tricky. But for, like, you know, if you're leaking, doing GC just doesn't matter. Right, because you just visit the object graph over and over again, right? So if the hypothesis holds that many web pages are leaking, um, did, we did the roadshow mostly for desktop, so maybe the situation on, on PWAs, on, on low memory devices is different. But if, if you're leaking, then it, it would not help, and the developer would need to fix. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs>